Hello everyone, welcome to Mind Brain Talks, the place where you find diverse and scientifically accurate information regarding psychology, neurosciences, neuropsychology, psychotherapy, and research methods every single week. My name is Bruno Faustino. I am a licensed clinical psychologist and neuropsychologist who's been working as a therapist, researcher, and educator for the past few years. In Mind Brain Talks, I discuss and describe topics from psychology to neurosciences and I try to explain them the best as I can for you to understand and for you to know more about it. All contents here are just for educational purposes and it's not intended to diagnose any psychiatric condition or neurological disorder. So, without further delay, let's jump for today's content. So, now let's look to the manuals that I recommend to you today. The first one is The Principles of Neurosciences from Eric Kendall. The second one is Neuroscience Explore the Brain from Beer Corners and Paradiso. And the fourth is Neuroscience, a sixth edition from Purvis and Agustin. The fourth is Fundamental of Neurosciences for Basic and Clinical Applications. The fifth is the ninth edition of Biopsychology, which is a very good manual. And the sixth from Michael Gazzina, the Cognitive Neurosciences, which is the fifth edition. So, this video is focused on neurosciences. Here I'll give to you a definition and I will describe some brief moments in history that help to shape the modern neurosciences. Also, I will describe to you the major branches of neurosciences and we can see how it is focused on specific research subjects, ok? So, let's go! So, and now let's see the definition of neurosciences. Neuroscience or neural science is the scientific field that studies the nervous system and how the nervous system works and how it is structured and how it evolved and developed through time. Neuroscience is an interdisciplinary science that shares commonalities with other scientific disciplines such as biology, chemistry, psychology, computer sciences and medicine. Neuroscience not only seeks to understand how the nervous system functions in the healthy conditions, but also it studies how the nervous system functions in neurodevelopmental, neurodegenerative and psychiatric disorders. Neuroscientists may explore the relationships between brain, mind and behavior from molecular level to complex overt behavior. Neuroscientists can specialize themselves in a wide range of fields from neurobiology, neuroanatomy, neuropsychopharmacology to neuropsychology, which means that neurosciences is a very wide field where different professionals can specialize themselves in different branches, but we will look to this in the future. So, neuroscience research methods may include fMRI, MEG, EEG or TMS, and a neuroscience research methods may also include experimental tasks, neuropsychological batteries or single cell recordings. Don't worry, in the future I will produce some different videos uh, focused on these specific research methods, ok? So now let's look to the main goals uh, of neurosciences according to the Society of Neurosciences. The first goal is to understand the human brain and how it functions. The second goal is to understand and describe how the central nervous system develops, matures and maintains itself. And the third, one main goal is to analyze and understand neurological and psychiatric disorders and discover methods to prevent or to heal them. Now let's look to a brief history of neurosciences. So, as you saw from the previous videos, Aristotle, the Greek philosopher, had a theory that the brain was a blood cooling mechanism. Now we go jump to a more contemporary approach where Paul Broca worked with patients who had brain damage and concluded that different regions in the brain were involved in specific functions. Broca's area is responsible for speech production and damage to this area during a stroke can lead to Broca's aphasia, which is the inability to produce accurate or coherent speech. 
helmets in the 19th century measure the speed of which nerve cells produced electric impulses. So, as you can see, some uh, parts of the history of neurosciences were covered in the previous video. So, you can look to that video and you can see in detail what happened during the story of neuropsychology of neurosciences. Camillo Golgi, an Italian physician and pathologist, used silver chromate salt to see what neurons look like. In the beginning of the 20th century, Santiago Ramon and Cajal, Spanish histologist and neuroscientist, hypothesized that neurons are independent nerve cell unities. Also, in the beginning of the uh, 20th century, Golgi and Cajal jointly received the Nobel Prize in Physiology for their work and categorizations of neurons in the brain. Since 1950s, research and practice in neurosciences fuel advances in our understanding of the brain, nervous system and general neurosciences. So, as you can see here, there are lots of pieces that were missing from this video regarding the history of neurosciences. So, in the future, I will produce a more length video with the more in-depth information where you can see how specific events in time and how specific contributions were the essentials to the understanding of how neural networks work and how the brain produces cognition and behavior. So, now let's look to the major branches in neurosciences. Behavioral neuroscience focus on the neurobiological basis of behavior to study how the brain relates to specific behaviors. Molecular and cellular neurosciences studies the form, the physiological and molecular properties of neurons and how they make up the brain and the nervous system as we know. Affective neurosciences is the exploration on how neurons and complex neural networks behave in relationship to emotions and affective processing. Cognitive neurosciences is focused on the study of the neural basis of cognition. It draws from psychology, cognitive science, linguistics and philosophy. Clinical neurosciences is the study of disorders of the nervous system. And computational neuroscience is the application of advanced computer simulations to study how the brain computes information. Social neuroscience studies how neurobiological systems relate to behavior and social interactions. Developmental neurosciences studies the development of the nervous system at the cellular level. And neuroimaging, which is a medical imaging that concentrates on the brain. So, research in neurosciences inform different clinical approaches. When we look to medicine, we can see that neurosciences inform neurology, psychiatry, neurosurgery, neuropathology and so forth. In psychology, research in neurosciences informs clinical psychologists, psychotherapists and clinical neuropsychologists. So, research in neurosciences may also inform physiotherapy, such as rehabilitation methods and different techniques. So, this is not an extensive approach, okay? There are lots of clinical approaches that neurosciences inform that were not listed here. So, this is not an extensive list, okay? So, take this in mind. So, now let's just summarize the contents of this video. So, we look to the definition of uh, neurosciences, which mainly is the study of nervous system. We look to the history of neurosciences and we look how it developed in research methodologies. Also, we look to the major branches of neurosciences, which is behavioral, clinical, cognitive, molecular neurosciences. So, as you can see, this is just a short video to explain to you the fundamentals of neurosciences from definition to its major branches. So, in the future, I will produce more videos that will describe you with more depth these domains of this scientific field, okay? So, it's all for today. Don't forget to see the video's description regarding today's theme to look to the manuals that I recommend to you. Also, if you like what I'm doing here, please consider to subscribe and hit the bell for notifications. Welcome to Mind Brain Talks and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye!
Hello everyone, welcome to MindBrain Talks, the place where you find diverse and scientifically accurate information regarding psychology, neuropsychology, neurosciences and research methods every single week. My name is Bruno Faustino, I am a licensed clinical psychologist and neuropsychologist who has been working as a therapist, researcher and educator for the past few years. Here I discuss and describe topics from psychology to neurosciences and I try to explain it the best as I can for you to understand and for you to learn something more about it. All research here are just for educational purposes and it's not intended to diagnose any psychiatric condition or neurological disorder. So, without further delay, let's jump for today's content. So, today I'll talk about interpersonal neurobiology. We will take a brief look on the major aspects of this framework and we will see how it gathers specifically aspects from the mind, the brain and relationships. But first, let's see the manuals that I recommend to you today. So, the first manual is The Developing Mind from Daniel Siegel. The second manual is the Neuroscience for Clinicians from Luis Cozzolino. And the third is Interpersonal Neurobiology and Clinical Practice, also from Daniel Siegel. And now, let's see what is interpersonal neurobiology. Interpersonal neurobiology is an integrative or interdisciplinary framework focused on human development and functioning. It was developed by Daniel Siegel, which is a psychiatrist in the 90s. So, it gathers different scientific disciplines such as neurosciences, psychology or anthropology to describe interactions between mind, brain and relationships. According to interpersonal neurobiology framework, the mind is viewed as a process that regulates the flow of energy and information through neuronal systems. These complex neuronal systems within interpersonal experiences can reshape genetically programmed maturation of the nervous system and early interpersonal experiences may have an impact on brain development and this may be the core of attachment disorders. So Daniel Siegel describes a model where we can find the simplified interactions between different brain structures to describe mind-brain relationships. The first brain structure is the brainstem which is responsible for body regulation such as heartbeat, stomach secretions and autonomous nervous system. Hippocampus, which is responsible for explicit and declarative memory. Amygdala, which is responsible for containing implicit memories and fear emotional responses. And the prefrontal cortex, which is responsible for higher function human abilities, such as complex thinking, decision making or even emotion regulation. So, complex neural networks are integrated in the prefrontal cortex and it controls nine essential neurobiological and interpersonal functionings. So, body regulation, communication attunement, affective regulation, response flexibility, fear responses or fear modulation, the expression of empathy and the ability of insight, and also, the ability of awareness or self-awareness and intuition. So, these nine essential neurobiological functions are regulated by complex neural networks which are integrated in the prefrontal cortex. So, this is the basis for the interpersonal neurobiology framework. Also, according to interpersonal neurobiology framework, the mind has four major facets. Subjective experience, which relates to one's experience of subjective feelings and perceptions. Consciousness, which is being aware of the self and being aware of the others, different cognitions, emotions, intentions and needs. Information processing, which is also related to sequential and parallel processing of different information from human experience, such as thoughts, emotions, behavior or motivations and self-organization, which is related to the structure of different parts of the mind. So, according to interpersonal neurobiology framework, the mind has these major four areas – subjective experience, consciousness, information processing and self-organization. And now, let's look how interpersonal neurobiology looks to attachment and interpersonal relationships. Interpersonal neurobiology is focused on how relations and attachment relates to mind or brain functioning. So, there is a bidirectional interchange between hereditary ability and environment. Neural networks, which encode 
dysfunctional experiences may develop thicker axons and more dendrites. And these systems, when stimulated, these networks have more likely to fire and affect behavior, because these systems may be related to a survival mechanism. So, dysfunctional experiences are encoded in neural systems between the amygdala and the brainstem, which are strengthened by repetition or biases. And human experiences shape neural systems that influence how the mind will develop. So, these experiences has impacts in neural systems, which produce some alterations in memory, emotion, awareness, flexibility, or even self-regulation. So, according to this framework, there are nine domains of integration that are strictly associated with mental health. So, these nine domains are consciousness, bilateral brain integration, brain connections from the brain stem to prefrontal cortex, integration of different aspects of the memory, also integrated different aspects of the narratives, which is the way how we make sense, how we make meanings from our inside worlds, integration of states of mind, integration of interpersonal communication with the others, integration of aspects of the passage of time within our lives and within our brains, and integration of identity, which means our sense of agency and belonging. So, according to interpersonal neurobiology framework, it is essential that we can integrate these nine domains to engage in a healthier way of life and have a better mental health. So, now let's just summarize the contents of today. So, interpersonal neurobiology may be viewed as an interdisciplinary framework and is focused on the brain-mind relationships. Also, it has a great emphasis in relationships and attachment and has nine domains of integration that are related with mental health. So, this is just an introductory video to show you what is interpersonal neurobiology. So, don't worry, in the future we have lots of time to engage in deeper explanations, okay? Well, it's all for today. Don't forget to see the video description regarding today's theme in order to see the manuals and the books that I recommend to you. Also, if you like what I'm doing here, please consider to subscribe and hit the bell for notifications. You can use the comment section below to express your thoughts and to express your mind. Let me know what you think about all of this. Welcome to Mind Brain Talks and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye!